Okay, welcome to part three of the ASHRAE Standard 90.1 presentation. This particular one is on section six of the standard, relates to uh, HVAC provisions. And the reason we're only showing uh, one half of it initially is that uh, this section is rather long, so uh, we're trying to cut it down into a, a couple portions. Again, we want to acknowledge uh, support for this series, the ARRA, the US DOE, and of course the state of Texas SECO office. The mechanical system compliance uh, may look a little more uh, complex than uh, the others we've gone through. We're trying to get from a proposed design to a 90.1 compliant HVAC system. And the way we do that is we can go through a simplified approach which happens to be section 6.3, or we can take the other uh, various complicated route of uh, going through the mandatory provisions through the prescriptive uh, section onto compliance, or failing that, we can always use the uh, backup method, the energy cost budget, and go to compliance. Uh, let me first cover that simplified approach because that would get you through the uh, to compliance the quickest. It does require you though to have a fairly simple building. It's uh, one to two stories and uh, less than 25,000 square feet. It also has to meet all 17 of these requirements listed here. Uh, I won't go into detail on each one of those. Uh, I will mention though that it has to have single zone systems it can have multiple zones in the building, but each zone, has, each uh, system has to serve just uh, one single zone. Uh, variable air volume controls have to uh, be able to cut the uh, CFM down to a half of the design point. Uh, economizer controls may be required, but may be exempted. We'll be going through the uh, requirements and the exemptions for those. There are heating efficiency requirements shown in these tables, 6.8.1 B, D, E, and F. Uh, it has to meet uh, exhaust energy recovery requirements with at least a 50% efficiency. There are other requirements on the uh, dual point uh, set point thermostats. Uh, there, there are control requirements on the heat pumps. Uh, we, we are preventing uh, simultaneous heating and cooling for humidity control, if possible. There are requirements for time clocks in uh, many building types. Uh, pipe insulation has to meet the uh, requirements in the tables, as, as does uh, ductwork and uh, plenum insulation. Uh, the outdoor air dampers have to have uh, shutoff controls. Uh, ducted systems have to be balanced to industry standards. Uh, we have to have interlocked thermostats to prevent simultaneous heating and cooling. Uh, there's a requirement for optimum start controls. And there's a requirement for DCV, that's demand control ventilation, that complies with section uh, 6439 that's in the standard. Uh, here's a little picture of the economizer cycle type of cooling uh, this shows where it's required and where it's not required. Uh, first of all, it's not required at all in uh, climate zones 1A and 1B. And uh, basically, I, I, I note here that that only includes Miami and Honolulu. Uh, the, the areas where it could be required is in all of Texas and, and the rest of the United States. So all of these climate zones do require economizer cooling. If your system is greater than 54,000 BTUs per hour. The economizer requirement for computer rooms is a little less stringent. Uh, it's exempted in uh, not only in climate zones 1A and 1B, but also in 2A, 3A, and 4A. And of course that, involve, that includes Austin and uh, Houston in, in the state of Texas. Uh, where it is required though is in uh, 2A, 5A, 6A, 7, and 8. If the system is rather large, that's uh, over 135,000 BTUs per hour. And further north, it's required in these climate zones for systems that are uh, 65,000 BTUs per hour or more. That's uh, 
for those of you th that like to think in terms of tonnage, that's uh, five and a half tons of air conditioning. The exemptions are uh, based on uh, getting a better efficiency for the uh, system itself and that would remove the uh, requirement to have the economizer cycle. So in these different climate zones, we see here 2A through 8. Uh, if, you're, if the efficiency of your HVAC system itself is improved by this percentage shown here in that climate zone, then you would be exempt from, uh, from having the economizer requirement. The mechanical efficiency uh, requirements are, are outlined in all of these tables. And I will not be showing you all these tables. They get very, uh, rather voluminous, so uh, it's not worth our time to look at detail at each one. I will show you the structure in uh, one or two of the tables, however. Uh, for example, this is table 681A. Uh, this is simply for air conditioners and condensing units. And uh, what we're being shown here is the mechanical efficiency uh, requirement. So you have an air-cooled air, uh, air conditioner, a certain size category, a certain uh, heating section type, and then over here you're just simply given the uh, minimum efficiency requirement. Many times this is specified as an EER, that's the energy efficiency ratio, or an IEER, that's integrated energy efficiency ratio, sometimes SEER, <laughs> That's seasonal energy efficiency ratio. In all cases, this is the number of uh, BTUs of performance you get out of a system per watt of energy put in. So the higher the number, the better. So what we're being shown here are minimum efficiency numbers. This is for the larger uh, water chilling packages. And uh, we're shown here efficiencies in terms of EER and in some cases KW per ton. Uh, based on whether it's air-cooled, uh, electrically operated, whether it's water-cooled, electrically operated, whether it's rotary or reciprocating uh, chillers. And uh, down here at the bottom, we even have uh, absorption chillers. And as you go across this chart, you can see it's uh, divided up into size categories. And these are, in, of course, tons of air conditioning. And uh, the efficiency ratios are shown over here for both full load and uh, integrated part load values. Uh, this is a table on uh, efficiencies for the heaters. This, in this case, warm air furnaces and uh, unit heaters. And we have warm air furnaces, uh, gas-fired ones. We have oil-fired ones. And basically, we're, we're, our efficiency is around 78 to 80 percent requirement. Uh, AFUE means the annual fuel utilization efficiency. If it says ET, that's just simply the thermal combustion efficiency of the unit itself. On computer room HVAC, the requirements are specific. Uh, they relate to the sensible coefficient of performance. N this is not including the latent cooling capacity. This is just the sensible uh, coefficient of performance. Again, BTUs of cooling uh, versus the uh, BTUs of energy put into the system. And again, air-cooled, water-cooled, uh, glycol-cooled, and so on, all of these uh, equipment types have uh, different efficiencies which are shown over here in the right-hand column. There's now a requirement in the standard for how you do load calculations. And uh, this standard is specifying that you shall use your load calculations from the ASHRAE standard 183-2007, and that's for computing peak cooling and heating loads in, the, in buildings except low-rise residential. Under HVAC controls, there are stipulations on the uh, zone thermostat controls saying they're required for each zone. Uh, there's a dead band control setting you have to have, or range, I'm sorry and uh, off-hour controls. And again, we have exceptions here, and that would be for systems that operate continuously and for the real small systems under uh, 15,000 BTUs per hour. On that dead band, 
uh, it has to have at least a uh, five degree range in it. So uh, you, you, you have a, a bottom point below which you would turn on heat and an upper point where you would turn on a cooling. That range between there has to be at least five degrees Fahrenheit. Exceptions to that would be thermostats that would require manual changeover between heating and cooling. And also when you have special occupancy or applications where there's a wide uh, temperature range uh, that's simply not acceptable. And the examples shown here are museums and retirement homes and, and different places that might also meet the approval of the adopting authority. The setback controls, uh, that's where you set back the temperature possibly at night when you uh, don't need as much uh, heating or cooling. Uh, this applies to heating systems that are in climate zones 2 through 8, and those set points have to be adjustable to uh, setting the thermostat at 55 degrees or, or less than that. And on the cooling side, this applies to climate zones 1B, 2B, and 3B, and uh, the set point there has to be at least uh, 90 degrees and, and above. And that would be to, uh, if you have to prevent high space humidity levels, then uh, that, that applies to that also. The exception to this would be the radiant uh, uh, floor and, and uh, ceiling systems. In, and uh, I note here, there's no climate zone 1B in the United States, just, just for your reference. Uh, ventilation shutoff damper controls. Uh, all, indoor, uh, all outdoor air intake uh, exhaust uh, dampers shall be equipped with motorized dampers that will automatically shut when the system or the space is not being served. And uh, the exceptions are when you can use gravity dampers. And that's in uh, buildings that are less than three stories in height above grade. And uh, all buildings in climate zones one through three would be exempt from this. Also, gravity dampers are okay in uh, systems with uh, design outdoor air intake of less than 300 CFM. So uh, for the very small systems, these, these are all exempt. The ventilation shutoff damper controls are not required in systems serving type 1 kitchen hoods, and those type 1 uh, refer to uh, appliances that exhaust air from uh, uh, grease-laden effluent. Damper leakage, there's a requirement for that. Uh, based on climate zones, you can see here in the left column, uh, buildings of uh, in in climate zones one and two or buildings of any height, you have a ventilation air intake uh, requirement over here. This is in CFM per square foot. This is the allowable leakage of the uh, damper in the system. And there's a di little difference between the two columns here, but not much. Uh, they they want to show differences between ventilation air intake and also uh, uh, exhaust uh, and relief damper. So these, these uh, leakage rates are different except when you go to uh, buildings that are less than three stories in, with non-motorized dampers, you simply don't have a requirement at all right in this column area here. The ventilation fan controls, uh, this applies now to uh, fan motors uh, greater than three-quarter horsepower and uh, they need to have automatic controls complying with uh, this section uh, 64331 and I show you that section right here and what that section says is automatic shutdown of HVAC system. This stipulates either time scheduled controls, occupant sensors, adjustable timers, or some sort of interlock to the security system uh, that, that shuts it off when uh, the security system is actually activated in the building. The exception to all this is uh, all, any HVAC system that operates continuously, we're not going to have to have this control system. Uh, this is new, the uh, enclosed parking garage ventilation system. Uh, this has to detect a contaminant level in the, in the garage and uh, then stage the fans or simply modulate the fan airflow rate to uh, a value of 50% or less of its design capacity. And then that's provided that the acceptable contaminant level is maintained. So that has to be number one requirement there because it does affect health and life safety. The exceptions are 
garages that are less than 30,000 square feet and they have a ventilation system that doesn't utilize mechanical heating or cooling. If the garage has an area to horsepower ratio that's greater than 1,500 square feet per horsepower, that does not, and, and does not utilize mechanical heating and cooling. Also, where the uh, local authority doesn't allow it, that's, uh, that's also exempted. Heat pump auxiliary heat control. Okay, on heat pumps uh, that are equipped with internal electric uh, resistance heater, usually we refer to these as strip heaters, they need to have uh, controls that prevent supplemental heating uh, with that strip heater when the load's actually met by the heat pump itself, that is the, the compressor portion. Uh, there's an exception on this, and that is heat pumps where the minimum efficiency is regulated by the National Appliance Energy Conservation Act and those uh, uh, heating seasonal performance factors, if they meet the table 681B, then uh, that, that would uh, be exempted from this, this particular requirement. This is uh, demand control ventilation. I think we mentioned this DCV earlier. Uh, it's uh, required for spaces greater than 500 square feet and uh, if it has greater than 40 people per thousand square feet. That's why it's called ventilation control for high occupancy. If the building is uh, served by airside economizer or if you have a modulation of an air, outdoor air damper or uh, your design airflow is greater than 3,000 square feet. In all those conditions uh, your, your DCV would be required. One thing to watch out for here is that uh, in all of this maintaining of ventilation control, you have to watch that you don't uh, violate ASHRAE standard 62.1. Now that standard relates to indoor air quality and actually mandates that you have to have certain outdoor air requirements coming into your building. That's for health matters. These are the economizer exceptions and uh, this is outlined in section 651 in the standard. I showed earlier a table that uh, showed where wet climate zones do require the uh, economizer cycle and uh, that was uh, table 651A that was for comfort cooling and then another table 651B was for computer rooms specifically. Those uh, did show uh, the climate zones in which economizer is demanded and when it's accepted. Systems that include non-particulate air treatment, they're also uh, exempted. Uh, in hospitals and ambulatory surgery centers, if there's 75 percent of the air supply goes to spaces humidified to uh, 35 degrees Fahrenheit dew point or more, those are exempted also. Uh, sometimes you have other systems that include condenser heat recovery for service water heating, that would be exempt. And also down here we see a bunch of uh, certain computer rooms that have specific requirements and those would also be exempt from the economizer cooling. And that concludes the uh, first half of uh, the HVAC section, that is part three of our, our series here. And uh, please uh, review the second part of the HVAC which is coming up in uh, part four. Thank you very much.